uh, and uh, <coughs> well, we, Song Nim and I, we, we composed this panel very carefully. So we had the academic view, the government view, the business view, and now we have the finance view uh, with uh, Nicolas Piau and also the energy and climate view. <coughs> because uh, Nicolas uh, has been a long time working for Angie uh, en France, a huge energy company. So he is an energy man, basically. But then he started to set up his own company, that is Tilt Capital. And Tilt Capital is an asset management group which supports startups, well, startups in different phases uh, concerning the energy transition. And, uh, well, that is an extremely important and interesting endeavor. And, Nicola, we are happy to have you here, and the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Freebert, and um, <clears throat> very happy to be there. Um, it's really an honor. And it's also quite intimidating because, frankly, after uh, after Philippe, uh, Jonathan, and, and and Christophe, as you were saying, I'm I'm not at all an expert of this field. Um, I'm more on the receiving side of all of what you've described as an as an energy guy. Um, and and actually, I'm going to try to to um, bring on board what I've just heard during the panel. Um, I think for us, what it means when you, look, when you look at it from the energy perspective, and that's maybe the first message, is I, st I would strongly oppose any views that say that with the, the energy transition, the energy trilemma is dead. You may have heard this, you may have heard that, you know, energy trilemma is basically you need to choose between, you need to compose between three pillars, <clears throat> affordability, sustainability, and security of supply. And I think what 2023 has brought is actually that security of supply has, be, has become the, you know, the, the main focus of that, of that energy trilemma. I think it bears two challenges. The first one is we should not forget about the other two, affordability and sustainability, and we'll come back to that. <clears throat> I think the second, the second implication is that um, it brings back energy in the field of geopolitics and, and, and industry. Think of the course of the last decade. Energy has been too much seen as a financial opportunity for a very simple reason. It was the early stages of renewables development. It was about securing contracts, EPCs, financing, etc. And there were no questions asked, also because it was very limited in scope compared to other forms of energy. I think today this is changing radically, and, and we need to acknowledge that. <clears throat> so I think that would be the, the first message is what we are seeing as energy investors is that for all the, the, the messages that have been passed by, by, uh, uh, by the panel is security of supply is coming back as a major topic in any energy investment. <clears throat> and what it means for us, for example, is today we may be embarking, and, and you opened, Friedbert, saying, you know, Russian gas may have been a problem here or there, but eventually that's not the real issue. The real issue is much more the dependency on China on a number of topics and in general with those key materials. Today, when you look at companies in which we invest, this is not a topic. This is not a topic because it is not seen. Today, if you want to obtain <clears throat> any, uh, if you want to obtain an inverter, if you want to obtain um, nitrium gallium based uh, uh, chip or silicium uh, carbide based chip, you have no issues. The question is, how long will that be? And so, of course, all what you've mentioned around, you know, enhancing the, the extraction, enhancing the, recyc the recycling, etc. So having additional resources is something that as energy investors, we welcome, but I think we should be much more vocal about the need for that. I absolutely agree there will be no energy transition without additional mining, about, without an, uh, additional extraction. 
But then it also bears the question, of course, of sustainability. <clears throat> and here, let me maybe come back to one element coming from, from that world. Um, I think if there, I would have one message on this is let's try to not make the same mistakes as we have done over the last decades on oil and gas. We cannot afford to have another Ogoni disaster or Macondo disaster with the, the mining industry for, the, for those critical raw materials. I think if we have that, and Jonathan, you said it very clearly, there is, you know, there is probably some image issue too. But beyond the image, I think there is the, the fact that if we have something of the magnitude of what happened uh, in Nigeria with the Ogoni community or with Macondo with BP, I think it will put a very, very, it will cast a very strong shadow on, on the reality of this, uh, of the sustainability of that energy transition. And, and for this, I, and please bear with me, I'm not at all an expert on that. I do think we need to, to engage into more cooperation on this, on this front. Actually, I even think that this whole critical material issue could be a way to foster a greater cooperation between consuming countries and producing countries or extracting countries. Because let's be clear also, today when we are saying we need to mine more, we need to refine more, who are the destinaries of those, of those materials? It's rather the developed and rich, you know, uh, I would say even rich population of the, of the more developed countries. How does that affect locally the people who are on the land where you have this extraction and this, and this processing? And I think here we need to engage into more cooperation. I think it should, it should translate into profit sharing. Uh, I think we should maybe learn some lessons from some oil countries that have been fairly good at this. Uh, I always used to say to people, why don't we drill for oil and gas in, in in Switzerland, where, is there is, where there are no taxes, virtually no taxes, and why do we drill in Norway where there are 78% taxes? Well, because there's oil and gas in Norway. And I don't think the Norwegian government or the Norwegian people will tell you that it has affected us in a, in a bad way that there was 78% taxes on, on each barrel that was taken out of the ground. And I think we should have that same kind of reflection on the critical raw material. We need to use that to transfer skills, money, um, uh, maybe try to create value chains locally so that we actually build not only some resilience, uh, of course we need to do it in Europe, but we also need to, to build those trusted um, value chains on the critical raw materials outside of Europe or India or, or wherever so that we can multiply those trusted value chain. And I remember last year, uh, Kaldum al-Mubarak al said that he, he, he was, the, the UAE were focusing on those trusted value chain. I think this is one example, one area where we should be targeting this, uh, this type of cooperation. And of course, there's a lot of, you know, we can say a lot about ESG, et cetera, but I, I absolutely believe that if we, we are not sensitive to environmental and social issues in mining, we will, have, uh, we will have a backlash on the energy transition because people will say it is actually not a, a clean transition and a just transition. I think this is critical. And finally, the, the, the last one I would like to make is more as an energy guy, um, and I'm, I'll be more raising questions actually than, than providing answers. There was a very interesting report from the IEA um, following you know, the, the increase in commodity prices in 21, 22 and the freight prices. Actually, when you look at th this trend, commodity prices plus uh, freight prices led to a 25% increase in capex for, for uh, renewable energy, offshore wind, onshore wind, even, even solar power, etc. Uh, one reason for that, for, we talked about electric vehicles. If you take an offshore wind turbine, you have 15, mil, sorry, 15 ton per megawatt of critical materials in offshore wind turbine. You have one ton per megawatt for a gas turbine. 
if you consider that a typical offshore wind turbine today is 15, uh, is 15 megawatts, that's 225 tons of critical material. That is actually 40% of that is copper. If you have a doubling of the price of copper for uh, an offshore wind turbine, it's just 1 million, 1 million more cost for each offshore wind turbine. So I think one thing we need to be aware of is that we have traded a short-term variable cost-based energy economy Basically, electricity prices and energy prices were determined by the marginal cost of gas, oil, what have you, coal to a certain extent, to, a, to an economy that's going to be increasingly linked to fixed cost price. And that has dramatic changes to the, to, to the, the energy market. Not saying it is bad or good, I'm just saying it will have implications. If you invest in a time where the cycle is very high on commodity, we will be locking for 25 or 30 years higher costs, and hence we will have impact on we will have impact on competitiveness. And so, I'm aware that I'm not bringing any solutions there. I'm just saying that we we very need important. to be very cautious of all these implications. I think one thing it means is, as an investor, I would say we need to find ways to soften the boom and bust cycles that will have repercussions on the capex. I think innovation is critical, and Cobalt is a good example. Um, you know, we first had NMC, NMC batteries, which were 5.32, so 5% nickel, 3%, uh, I mean, 50% nickel, 30% uh, manganese, and 20% cobalt. Now we're, we're running rather on 9.00, so it's actually 90 uh, nickel, 0 0.5 manganese, 0 0.5 cobalt. So indeed, innovation will help us build some resilience at the same time if we innovate and we deprive some of the countries that see that as a way to to create sustainable wealth for them this will also pose a problem so that means that again this calls for heightened cooperation to to avoid that some countries that may want to today invest massively in some of those uh, in some of those minerals if there is a massive innovation in 10 years, don't see, don't find themselves with, with stranded assets and, and, and a link to unjust, uh, unjust uh, uh, transition. Well, thank you. Thank you.